pulling up for another excerpt challenge. Today, we got pictures on that. Oh, damn. <laughs> Try it. Take two. Welcome to another excerpt challenge, guys. And we got a special one planned for you today. So, stick around. Oh boy, we got another excerpt challenge. So welcome guys, I'm Chris from Two Button Brass and I'm super stoked to be the guest judge, not the guest judge, I'm the actual judge, the only judge for today. This is one of my final challenges, at least for now, with Two Button Brass. So I wanted to go out with a bang and when I come back in a couple months after boot camp, I'll be uh, ready to go. So I already, you know, as you can see from our Instagram, if you follow us there, links in the bio, I shaved my head today and uh, lost the man bun. But we have a really special challenge lined up for you today. We are doing pictures at an exhibition, the prominent promenade, prominent promenade trumpet solo from the very beginning. The promenade trumpet solo kicks off the whole multi-movement piece. Now, the premise for the piece is basically a series of musical portraits, um, and it's kind of the point of view of a person walking leisurely down a gallery. Because this trumpet solo starts the whole piece, it's very important that you do a couple things right. Well, really everything right. So you, don't, you really don't want to mess this up. First, you want to have really great intonation. There's a lot of things like octaves, there's fourths, and everything, especially if you're in a big resonant space, like a parking garage or a concert hall, uh, those things really are evident if they're not really, really precisely tuned. Two, you must have really excellent timing. The promenade is an unhurried pace. Uh, most take it around 92 to 96 beats per minute, uh, but there is some, uh, from some fluctuation depending on conductor and player. And the last thing you gotta have is just a stellar sound. Your sound's gotta be like a brick. Uh, you know, Mazorsky, you know, writes in a very uh, organistic kind of way. And so organs don't have a lot of shape to the notes. They're just like bricks of sound. And so when the brass uh, choir comes in after the solo, you gotta kind of set up the mood for everybody else to join in on. And since we usually do our excerpt challenges from our basements, our bedrooms, they're really small spaces and not where orchestral music is meant to be heard. And they're usually meant to be heard in concert halls, bigger venues. I wanted to do something today to kind of represent the massive space that uh, can really add to the aesthetic of this piece. So here we go, pictures and an exhibition promenade right here, right now, check it out. And there you have it. That's Pictures and an Exhibition Promenade by Modest Muzorski. And if I can say anything, that melody is anything but modest. It looks super easy on paper, and heck, it'll even sound really easy if you hear somebody performing it at a really high level. But it's anything but. Huh? Yes. <laughs> It's anything but easy to play this well. There's so many things that could go wrong, um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how these guys on their different instruments can tackle it. So, without further ado, let's get to the competition portion of today's episode. So we have three competitors. They each get five minutes to practice the excerpt, listen to it, do whatever they want to. They could even sleep for five minutes, hey, because I love a good nap before a performance. Uh, but at the end of five minutes, they have one shot to give me their best take on the excerpt, at which point I'll uh, render my judgment and award the next winner of the excerpt challenge, the coveted bragging rights. And those rights are so, so sweet when you get them, but they're so, so elusive. So without further ado, uh, we're gonna get started with this. Um, 
we're actually going to be uh, headed out. So if you guys want to come along with me, we're going to drive to another location to hear some of these other excerpts. So let's skedaddle. All right. Well, welcome to Bird Park. This is the first location of the excerpt challenge. Uh, we'll be listening to Mr. Cam, the Tupa Man, play right now. now. Ah, God damn, my neck. Okay. Ooh. Those cracks don't sound healthy. Hey, Chris. Really you should get that checked out, Cam. Doing, uh, the extra challenge this week. I, every every week I open with that. <laughs> I'm always very excited to do this. Uh, but of course, you're really excited. Excerpt, out of any excerpt we have done with the group, uh, this is probably the one I'm most familiar with. That is not a tube excerpt. Um, and here we go. And away we go. Here we go, Cam. Let's hear it. <laughs> That's one of the things that's uh, difficult about this is that C to F concert pitch uh, slur. That's the slur of a fourth, getting that really clean and in time. Good slide work. I think he's playing the notes very well. Um, I would like to hear a little bit more uh, of that majestic quality. It's kind of like a procession a little bit. Very, very heavy on the front. <laughs> Great falsetto, or I think he just belted that. What's usually accepted is like breathing every two measures on the bar lines. I kind of like that connected though. What's it gonna be, Cam? I, uh, I like where your mind is at though. He's, he's thinking about phrasing. Whereas this, I think, would actually function better with an armature vibrato. I'm gonna change that and see if I can't get it to oh, just pop interesting. those. Dude, it's really the last note of each bar it seems to have a little bit on it. That maybe not every single one, but generally. Stylistically, I think yeah, it's uh, it's appropriate to add a little bit of vibrato. I don't do a whole lot, um, especially on this excerpt, because you know my general rule is like I add vibrato to enhance a note that's longer than the quarter note. I just don't do it a lot. For the sake of this, I'm nixing the vibrato just because I would no want to spend so much more time refining it. That we think about the spinning of the air for the vibrato rather than like really like a twitch. Um, just keeping the airstream kind of like alive and energized, I think is, is the main thing that you want here. But you overall want to keep that direction of the phrase kind of going forward with this very heavy kind of pesante feel. Anyway, here's the final take. Hope you enjoy. All right, into the final take. Good luck, Cam. Ah, here we go. No vibrato. All right, nice. I think he's added a lot more front to the note, so that gives it more of that kind of like majestic feel that we're looking for. Stuck a little breath in there. It's okay. Now tuba's a little bit, takes a little bit more air than a trumpet. Oh, breathe before the octave. Risky, <laughs> risky. All right, very hashtag valiant effort, Cam. I think uh, a lot of the elements that we're looking for, uh, intonation was pretty, pretty spot on. Uh, wouldn't quite agree with some of the breath choices. I think there's an easier way to breathe that's less interruptive and less likely to make you crack. We got an angry doggo. He kind of hit the nail on the head uh, when he was talking about the brightness of the trumpet with this, because like you are leading a whole brass section, so you do need to have a little bit more brilliance to the sound uh, in order for everybody else to kind of like support that. If it's very dark and round sounding, it's kind of hard to, to ride over an orchestra uh, like you need to do in this instance. The next person we have is Mr. Alex Melzer, and we're gonna go to another spot in San Diego just for that, so stick around. So for our second venue, we're at the famous or the infamous, depends on how you cut it, uh, Oregon Pavilion here at Balboa Park in San Diego. And we're ready for our second contestant of the day, which is Mr. Alex Melzer on the trombone. So we're this going. week, Chris is keeping it simple with pictures at an exhibition. Keep it simple. There's simple no is hiding good. in this excerpt. Uh, definitely going to be a Can you really hide in any excerpts though? Let's see what the trombone's got. And you'll hear. 
That fourth partial is so flat lately. I don't know. I gotta fix that. <laughs> I'll keep an ear out for it. So it sounds like he's doing a lot of uh, just kind of interval practice, making sure all those intervals line up. Uh, like I was saying earlier, when I was performing in the practice garage, or the parking garage, rather, uh, when you're in a resonant space and you hear those, uh, the reverberation of, the, of your first notes, you have to play in tune with yourself. If you can't play in tune with yourself, there's no way brass section is going to be able to follow that. So that's why this is such a standard excerpt. Because it'll look simple, but you got to be good at the simple stuff. The air is just, just constant air. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you ever hear Bud Herseth with Chicago playing this, it's super sustained, super sostenuto. This is actually a great excerpt to be doing uh, with a drone. I'd, I would like to see somebody yeah, pull out some practice tools like a drone or even a metronome, but no one's done that yet. It's different for everybody, but it sounds like the, the octaves for him are popping out really nicely. It's the other intervals that are a little bit more challenging. Which is, it's really fine. boring when I play it just note, 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 note. <laughs> I think I should pick some like goal notes for the phrase. Okay, I like oh this. Oh my yeah, god, I have two phrasing. minutes left already? Yeah. Canvas, something kind of similar. <laughs> nice, yeah, really really hitting that lower octave gives you the momentum that you need to scoot on up to the top octave. So I like that, and that, that, that's something I do too. Uh, I wonder what his tempo is gonna be, because he's done a couple of tempo, tempi, tempos. Um, sounds like he's a little on the fast side, as it is right now. Oh good, oh we got the metronome coming out. The metronome making an appearance. We gotta make these like, like 20 minute excerpt challenges or something. It should be, it should be like it's a just, five month excerpt <laughs> challenge. What can you yeah. do with five minutes? <laughs> All right. All right, cool. Take. Well, let's see if uh, some of that work uh, bleeds through onto go. his final take. Fingers crossed. Good luck, Alex. Let's, I'll be listening for those octaves, those intervals, and that phrasing. <laughs> A little bit on the quicker side, but with an freezing, I'd say. Good fourths, C to F is lining up good. Well done. Uh, I, I really enjoyed that. So a lot of good stuff here too. Uh, a different kind of approach than Cam was doing. Cam talked about the vibrato on the notes. Alex talked about some of the phrasing. I feel like that didn't quite make it to his final take. I would have liked to hear that because I did like that a lot. I think that was, that was a very musical choice. Uh, kind of easier said than done at times though. Uh, if you can hear uh, this organ music in the back, it's a very, very dramatic moment here. Uh, but I have one more to listen to, Mr. Daniel Skib. So uh, if you come along with me, we're gonna go to one more location. It's a little bit chilly, but hey, we're at the beach. We made it. Can't do San Diego without the beach. So here we are in Coronado. Uh, so last but not least, we have Mr. Skib. So uh, I hope that there's not a whole lot of wind in this mic, but so I hope this is usable. Hey, Chris. Um, hey, Skib. Welcome to my basement. It's me and my uh, famous welcome to my beach. fridge today. All right. So All right. What's your strategy going to be like? The Tenuta marks on every beat, but Yes. I think every time I've heard this, there's still quite a bit of front to the note. So I'm going to try, oh, and, yeah. try and maintain Very the good. clarity that all trumpets are known for. Yes, love the clarity, the front. But overall, remember the sauce tenuto is very important too. That's what the tenuto is for. I like his tempo. It's a little slower than the others, but I think it's... Uh, it just gives it a little bit more uh, unrushed, unhurried kind of feel. Some of the notes are a little bit out, so I'm curious to see if he'll, uh, if he'll really tune up those intervals. Okay. It's really just an interval study. All of these notes, I feel, just have to be like... They gotta be bricks of sounds. The same way individually. 
Yeah, there you go. Which is tough to do. Well, let's see. It is tough. Oh, it is. It's like simple, but tough. I was thinking simple, but tough. That could be a very good um, dating profile catch line. Yeah, I think Skib is really getting, of, of the three that I've heard so far, he's got the most kind of like intention behind each note. He, it's kind of like a, I don't know, just like a smolder that just kind of like keeps going. The inevitability of the, of the note. Yes, this is a recurring theme, I think. This is kind of where uh, having a nice resonant hall can help you because you can like cut a note a tiny bit short to give space for a breath, but the reverb kind of carries over and uh, gives you the appearance of playing much longer than you actually are, like the parking garage. That's the time. That's this time. All right. I'm staying cool. on screen while I have to my water this time. <laughs> He was called not out last time. He's not. Yeah, he's not a cheater. I know he's not. I tr we, we we trust you, Skip. But, but yeah, it is. It is. It'd be sketch when cool. you when you leave the camera. Yeah, definitely on the slower side of tempo. But I I, I like it. I really dig the slower. It gives you time to really sit on each note and give it its proper weight. You could have breathed there. See, that would have been a good place. But I like that he doesn't break up the octave with breath. Uh, so a lot of great stuff from Skib. Uh, I like I've been saying. I just love the sostenuto kind of approach he had. Uh, having good clarity yet with direction. I think that's that's the way to go with this one. Uh, you'll hear some people play it kind of more bell tone like, where they really come away from notes. They taper a little bit. I think that works if you have more of a resonant space. Uh, so it's really apparent when you're in like a practice studio or whatever skip is in it. Uh, refrigerator, refrigerator graveyard, I guess. So yeah, a lot of really great stuff. Now I have to kind of compute, think about what I've heard and uh, come back to you guys with the winner. Well, I uh, I was gonna change scenes, but I mean, it doesn't get much better than this. Everyone did a great, great job, of course. Uh, and this is always the hardest part. So I'm not gonna be able to announce a winner. You're gonna have to do it, dude. No worries, my dude. So the winner is Skib. Good job, Skip. You won those bragging rights. That's it for me, guys. So uh, enjoy this very cloudy day in San Diego. Uh, I'm gonna go jump in the water now. Uh, but I'll see you next time. If you like this video, subscribe. And if you like it, uh, leave it a like. My, uh, my, my ride is here, so I gotta get going. But uh, thanks guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.